From the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. The regular season is underway with all but one WCHA team in action. The Sioux returned from the long trip to Alaska with a gold pan. That's symbolic of the champions of the Kendall Classic. Here's what's in store in the program. What's it like to be the middle child in an all-hockey playing family? Our player profile is with Mario Lamoureux. Also, he's been a champion about everywhere he's played. A visit with Mike Commodore. Stick around, Coach Dave Haxtall is going to give us his take on the games in Alaska. But before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. Who scored the fastest goal to open a season in Sioux history? The answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, the Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Voller Insurance. The Fighting Sioux football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alaire Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kicks set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! You've never seen fast. You've never held it in your hand and unleashed it with a fingertip. Never watched pixels whip by at one gigahertz and had your neurons struggle to keep up. You've never seen fast because you've never seen this. The Droid Incredible by HTC. It's nothing short of its name. Buy a Droid Incredible with Flash and get any phone free. Basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 We asked you who scored the fastest goal to open a season in Sioux history. Maybe you thought it was Jason Gregoire's goal 39 seconds into the opener last year. No, it was actually Lee Davidson. His goal 13 seconds into the 89-90 season opener against Alabama Huntsville. That's the record. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy and UND head hockey coach Dave Haxtall is with us. We had a tie and a win, but a classic championship for the Sioux in Alaska, Dave. Uh, Friday night against Alaska Anchorage, fast start for your squad on that one for sure, uh, but maybe too fast? Well, fast start, uh, we did a lot of good things, but I don't know that we deserved the 5-1 lead that we did have. Uh, and then uh, obviously we went to sleep a little bit uh, for about 12 minutes. Not a little bit, we went to sleep uh, right from top down. And uh, you know what? It was, uh, it was a tough lesson to learn, but I think it was a real good thing. You know, the comment was made, maybe a good learning experience for our young guys. I think more so a good reminder for, uh, for our veterans, uh, you know, how hard it is to close out games and you have to play 60 minutes. Maybe a little odd that a veteran team would get a big lead like that and, and almost let it go to their heads a little bit. You can expect that maybe of a young team thinking it's going to be easy. A little different for an older team, but a lesson well, learned. Yeah, we haven't, you know, we haven't faced a lot of uh, adversity. We haven't uh, been, you know, we're not a battle-tested team right now, even, uh, even though we are a veteran team. We've got to go through some of these experiences to, to make sure we, uh, we get a little sharper. Um, and I thought the, the results of, of a real tough night on Friday night uh, were, were probably good results for us in terms of our performance on Saturday night. Well, we're seeing some of the goals by your team early to give yourself, uh, give yourself a lead in the game. And, and it was looking good offensively anyway. You guys made some nice plays. We did. We did a lot of real good things offensively. We, we had some great cycles going. We were going to the net. We were driving the middle lane. We were making good plays coming up ice. 
Um, but you know, even at that point in time, we uh, we had some uh, some softness in the neutral zone. We you know we did not have good structure. We were not uh, paying attention to to some of the details. Uh, that you have to pay attention to in order to be a good solid team and it came back obviously to nip us uh, uh, you know at the end of the second period we gave up a couple very sloppy goals and then to start the third period we spent the first five minutes in our own zone before we recovered and played a pretty good final ten minutes of, uh, of the third period and, and a decent uh, overtime period. And then a great save to end the, uh, to end the overtime for Brad Eisens after a giveaway. So uh, sometimes you need a goaltender that maybe not had a strong game to bail you out a little bit. Well, I thought Brad's play kind of it kind of mirrored the play of our team. You know, I think he, uh, he went to sleep a little bit in the middle portion of that game, but coming up with that big save at the end saved the point for us. Uh, and at the end of the, you know, at the end of the night, uh, that was a huge, uh, huge point in the game. Saturday, more the, uh, the kind of play that you expect from this team. I think I mean it was a smothering forecheck, is what I called it. That you allowed them just five shots on goal through two periods of play. Uh, you guys responded real well, didn't you? Yeah, that was key. Responding the way we did coming off of uh, Friday night's disappointing. Uh, performance. Uh, we, we responded well. We, we wanted to play a 60-minute hockey game. We did. I thought our forecheck was much better. Uh, we cycled the puck and did a great job in terms of possession. We were still making a lot of plays coming up ice, but uh, as I mentioned Friday night, I thought our neutral zone play and our, our D zone coverage were, uh, were poor. I thought uh, Saturday for this time of year, I thought we had great communication and pretty good commitment overall in all three zones. And you'll play Aaron Dell every game in Alaska. Well, he's, uh, he's done a good job up there. He's played very well in that building. I uh, was, uh, you know, was proud of the job that Aaron did. He had uh, not a lot of work in the first half of that hockey game. In the first two periods, he only had five shots against. But I thought the work that he did have in those two periods, he looked sharp. And as well, in the third period, he did a great job. For a season opening series, you got to look at a lot of different things and a lot of different scenarios, so it was a good. Well, we'll take the learning lessons and, uh, and the three points and uh, hopefully a good building block for us. All right, that was last weekend. A win and a tie uh, in Alaska in a conference championship. Coming up, he is one of the all-time most popular Sioux players. A visit with Mike Commodore is coming up. Football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alaris Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kicks set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. <laughs> With waterfall hunting, you're trying to get the birds to come to you. You're picking the field, setting up the decoys, hiding in blinds. You're making the calls, trying to get their attention to make them come to you to get within range. That's where the real challenge lies, is bringing them to you. A rewarding experience would be a customer coming in, telling you their success story that you were able to help them out with. I'm Dave Averly. I'm a waterfall expert at Shields. Tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are North Dakota! The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where graduates succeed, where ideas are born, and research is driven by imagination. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. He was once called the most popular seventh defenseman in the NHL. 
But over the years, Mike Commodore has proven to be a prominent presence on the Blue Line. We visited with Mike about his days at UND and his transition into the National Hockey League. kind of a little bit lame maybe and but as soon as I walked into the building and saw about 10 seconds of action I knew I wanted to play here. Grew up in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta and that's where I was born but I became a man here. I mean this is where I learned how to deal with people. This is where I learned this is where really where I I don't know how else to say it became a man and I remember uh, Scott Sandlin coming and Dean Blaze and did the fly down and honestly when I came I was like you know what it's a free trip North Dakota, I've never been to North Dakota, like I'm on my own, you know, I was 16 or 17 years old at the time. I was like, yeah, let's, why not? And I remember coming and I was just going into the old rink there and I remember they were playing uh, Colorado College and I was just completely blown away and, and just by the whole atmosphere, um, the students, just everything was just fantastic. I thought the hockey was high paced because it's a little bit older and Education was a big part of it. Um, my parents are, were both educators, they're retired now, but they were both into it, and that was a big part of it. But you know what, more than anything else, um, I knew nothing of college hockey for sure, nothing of really college anything. Um, my plan was to finish high school, and then I was gonna go play in, in the WHL uh, Canadian Major Juniors the next year. My Commodore! I, I remember coming to UND when I was a freshman, and. You know, you kind of look at who's going to be here, what year everybody is, freshman, sophomore, senior, whatever. And I remember kind of, you know, in my mind, and I think in a lot of people's minds, it was, you know, our first two years, we had, you know, all those guys, the Panzers and everybody. And our junior year was the year that we're going to lose everybody. We lost like nine seniors or something. I remember Wes Dory and I were kind of in our dorm room and we're like, well, let's try and get something done here in the first two years because we're going to be on spring break in the third. And then, you know, it's funny how it works out where, you know, that ends up being the year that, that we end up winning it. I learned a lot in my, in my years that I was here about the tradition, but I think I'm still learning. I mean, I still run into people and, you know, we do our little trips in the summer. And, uh, it's just kind of a fantastic group and a fantastic tradition that I'm glad I'm a little part of. I mean, I've, I've maintained a lot of friendships throughout here and, um, you know what, I've had a great, I've been professional now for 10 years and honestly, I, I wouldn't change, I wouldn't trade any of it for the three years that I spent here. If I had to do it all over again, I'd be just do the same thing. I'd still be a fighting suit. Mike Commodore won a Stanley Cup in 2006 with the Carolina Hurricanes. That year, he brought Lord Stanley's Cup to the University of North Dakota. He's an NHL fan favorite who's known for his bushy red hair and his bathrobes. Jason Gregoire was the MVP of the Alaska Tournament. We'll give you some insight why, and sometimes the energy line can be just what a team needs. Stay with us, we'll take a closer look next when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. Come cheer on the Fighting Sioux and wear pink in support of breast cancer awareness as the volleyball team hosts rival South Dakota. This dig pink match is set for 7 p.m. on October 14th. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota. I am North Dakota. We are North Dakota. Two basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877 Football team hosts Lamar on October 30th at the Alaris Center. Tailgating fires up at 8 a.m. with opening kicks set for noon. It's time to taste victory. Get your tickets now. We are North Dakota!
The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where personal connections matter, where classmates become friends, where leading scholars become mentors. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with UND head hockey coach Dave Haxtell. And coach, as we saw, the teams in non-conference play uh, last weekend opening up the season. Everybody opened up with the exception of Bemidji State. Uh, and everybody got wins, or rather, only two losses, I should say, uh, of, among the whole mix of 11 teams. Not bad. Yeah, it, was, huh? it, was a, it was a real good weekend for our conference. Non-conference play is so important uh, as, you, uh, as you go through the length of the season. And uh, we, had a, we had a great weekend non-conference wise with only the two losses. So it's a great way for our conference to start uh, early off in the season. Coach, a few things happened last weekend in Alaska that, uh, that we want to point out to, to the folks. And, and among those would be uh, uh, the play of your, of your fourth line that you put together on Saturday night. But we're going to start with a goal by Jason Gregoire. And that play by Matt For or by Derek Forbert, as we saw right there, as Gregoire goes down and, and scores on the back end. But uh, you made a point of that play by Derek Forbert is one that not very many defensemen, certainly not a lot of freshmen defensemen. Well, it was just made. such a such a poised play that uh, he looked off the play that would have been trapped on the wall, made the play up the middle, uh, and ended up in a great rush up ice with a couple guys driving the middle lane and opening up uh, an alley for uh, for Jason Gregoire to take the puck to the net. Then we're watching a lot of yellow nano jerseys drop to the ice and a couple of shifts here by the line that you put together with Mario Lamaru and Derek Rodwell and Brent Davidson and boy did they give you some energy in that the second game. Well we we'll talk about a mentality and that line brought a mentality. They came out with a, kind of a single-minded focus. They were going to uh, they were going to play in straight lines. They were going to play fast, physical and they did all of that as you see in scrum right at the end of uh, a couple of uh, great body checks on a Ford check. Uh, taking the puck to the net and uh, creating a lot of havoc in front of uh, uh, UAF's net. So those three guys did a great job within the role that our team needed them to play. Heck, what does that do for the rest of the team when they, when they see uh, those guys who role players and they accept that role and they cherish that role, I think, uh, but uh, when they do the type of things that they were doing, what does that do for the rest of the guys? Well, there's a, there's a lot of things going on there, but number one, it's, I mean, it absolutely fires up the bench. I mean, when those guys went out and they had their first shift, uh, they had two or three great hits. Uh, the, the scrum at the end of their first shift is what we just saw. Uh, the bench is, uh, everybody on the bench is standing on their feet cheering for them and everybody's excited. They're ready to go. They, they want to get out there and uh, that is the type of mentality and the type of excitement uh, that a line like uh, Lamru, Rodwell and Davidson can bring to a team and, and they did it for 60 minutes for us on Saturday night. And they did it with composure which I thought was very important that they weren't running around crazy. Well that's, there, there's a real fine line there. You can really you can hurt your team if you're, uh, you know, if you're not uh, doing things intelligently. You know, hits from behind, hits to the head, uh, stick penalties, things like that are, you know, obviously they're, they're points of emphasis right now within college hockey. So you've got to be able to skate, you've got to be able to move, you've got to be able to be in the play in order to play that type of role. And all three of those guys can, uh, can do those things and, and along with that they can think and uh, that's what made them real effective on Saturday night. Maybe the best part is most of all of your lines can perform that way but maybe not quite to the physical extent those guys went. Huh? Well you get you know Derek Rodwell 6'2", 215, uh, Brent Davidson 6'4", Mario Lamru is a, is a pit bull in there. Uh, those guys played to their strengths and that's what we want you know we recruit different players we want those players to play the way uh, that they can be effective and I thought those three guys uh, really did a great job in, uh, in their role on Saturday. It was fun to watch, no doubt about it. Seems like everywhere you go there is a Lamaru playing hockey. We'll visit with one of the four to wear a Sioux jersey. That's Mario. We'll get to that, but first a look back in our Fighting Sioux history. Do you remember the name Gord Shervin? He was on that 84 Sioux team at Lake Placid. But where is he now? We'll have the answer and more when we come back. The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again.
2022 basketball season tickets are on sale now. Call 877-91-SUE. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. The real thrill of hunting is the fall season. The thing I enjoy most is watching the dogs work and seeing their enthusiasm. It's a great experience to get a chance to watch the birds flush, get a good shot, getting a good retrieve, a good point, a dog that backs. It gives me a lot of satisfaction to see a nice shotgun go to somebody that truly appreciates the aesthetics of fine rifles or shotguns. I'm Jack Pruitt, and I'm a pheasant hunting expert at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, Gord Shervin played with the Canadian Olympic team, four years in the NHL, 12 more in Europe. He's in a business partnership with another former Sioux, Perry Berezan. I've been doing radio play-by-play -play for Sioux hockey for a long time. So long that I've called a father's games and then not just one of his sons, but two of his sons. I had a chance to visit with the latest Lamoureux in a Sioux jersey. At North Dakota Junior, Mario Lamoureux. Mario, uh, we want to find out a little bit about you and have the folks find out a little bit about where you've been and how you got here at the University of North Dakota, local boy, Grand Forks, always been a Sioux fan? Uh, ever since I can remember, I remember my first Sioux memory. Uh, I was probably five years old. My dad tried to take me to a game and we missed the first period because I was crying because I couldn't find the right jacket. But uh, I made it to the game. I think the Sioux won that night. And ever since I can remember being a little kid, I've been a diehard Sioux fan. Where'd you play your youth hockey in town, in Grand Forks? Uh, I played for the Grand Forks Supras growing up and then uh, it's played there until fifth or sixth grade and then moved on, played uh, some hockey in Grand Forks for Bantams and Pee Wees and then went, played for Grand Forks Central, won two state championships there and then moved on to the, uh, the junior level. The junior level was uh, much traveled for you, wasn't it? Well, I don't know if it was much traveled, but it was long stayed. I was there for four years. Um, it was, uh, it was long four years, but I had a blast. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't trade any of those years for anything. It was well worth my time and uh, kind of set the foundation for me to come to UND. Uh, you know, lifelong dream to come here. So definitely set the foundation for me and definitely well worth the four years I spent there. Mario, when did you figure out that you might be able to play this game at a, at a higher level? And, and, or, or really, when did you decide that you really enjoyed this game and it was something you wanted to pursue? Ever since I was a little kid, I uh, played with my older brothers and you know they kind of probably created the competitiveness in me. Um, ever since I was little, I always wanted to beat them. So they kind of pushed me all the way through up until you know, they're still pushing me today. So I know Pierre's my, he's my coach now, so he's got extra motivation to uh, you know kick me in the rear if I need it so ever since I was a little kid uh, you know I've always had that you know that drive to be better and you know try and get to the highest level possible. What did it feel like when Coach Hackstall talked to you approached you about coming to North Dakota playing hockey? I was ecstatic um, definitely excited about it uh, kind of weighed my options on what I wanted to do and you know, I was actually committed to another school before I committed here and that didn't work out and you know I talked to Coach Haxtell again and I asked if you know are you still uh, interested in having me come and he said absolutely and uh, you know I was probably easily the best decision I ever made I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world my last two years here have been absolutely unbelievable and uh, you know I'm trying to soak up as much as I can while I'm here because it's I know it'll be the best four years of my life, so I'm trying to uh, enjoy it and uh, yeah, just enjoy everything while, uh, while it's still here. Well, if you're not playing hockey in 10 years, what will you be doing? That's a, I have no idea. I have no idea, Tim. Maybe coaching. I don't know. I'd like to get into coaching, do a little bit in the summers, and uh, it's, it's uh, fun, uh, hard work, definitely. It's not as easy as people say, but uh, it, coaching maybe or else you know somewhere in the business world we'll see though. 
Sure, thanks for being with us and, uh, and best of luck. Thank you, Tim. It all started back in 1979 when Mario's father, Pierre, came to UND as a goalie. Somewhere along the line, Linda had something to say about it as well. Bemidji State has a brand new arena and a new league. Tickets sold out in Bemidji for their first ever WCHA season game against the Fighting Sioux. Some thoughts with the coach coming up. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, the Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, and Voller Insurance. Great tickets are still available for many of the exciting University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux home hockey games at the REL. Support your team and get your tickets now. We are That is a great online course. is a television show produced by staff and students at the University of North Dakota. Here you actually get to do your own stories and you get to go out and talk to people and interview and learn about the cameras and everything that goes into like a live television production. I mean it's incredible. Give it a try. I mean even if you're not broadcasting communications major anything I mean it's worth it. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with UND Head Hockey Coach Dave Hackstall. Time to look ahead to next week at Bemidji State. Coach, and we'll talk more about that in our next program, but uh, this is going to be a heck of a series uh, with two teams that uh, have played for several years now and a new building as well to add into the mix. Yeah, there'll be some great energy in that building, obviously opening it up. Uh, I'm sure we're going to be, our fans will be slightly outnumbered, uh, but uh, really for us it's a matter of building off of what we did up in Alaska starting, uh, you know, just continuing to improve. And we've got to go in there now, start of the WCHA season. So these are critical games, as they always are. Uh, but we look to get better and look to uh, go in there and find ways to win on the road. Points available this weekend at Bemidji State. That's what it's about. We'll talk more about that next week, folks. So we thank you now for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey this time around. Be with us next week when we get a look at the new rink in Bemidji and hopefully a successful league opening weekend. That and much more on our next show. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all of our fans for watching, and we'll see you next week, and go Sioux!